Like and subscribe on the way in the door, my people. I hope you all are having a truly, truly fantastic day today. Uh, today, we're going to do something slightly different. You see the title of the video. Uh, <laughs> if you notice, the title of the video says response to a LeBron James fan. And I did not use the word fanboy. Now, I didn't use the word fanboy because this LeBron James, this particular LeBron James supporter, I think is a rare LeBron James supporter. And he was responding to my video about why I thought LeBron James was bad for the game. And I'm going to tell you what, in this response, he did not call me a hater. Uh, he he wrote a lot, and I disagree um uh, with a, I disagree with what he wrote, especially mainly in the context of which it was used. And I'm going to address this, but I thought his response, you know, he didn't get disrespectful. You know, he simply said, I disagree with you. And because of that, I'm going to give a respectful response to this LeBron James fan, to this LeBron James supporter. Fanboys, uh, take notes. <laughs> of how not to end up in the fanboy files. Uh, so I, I'm actually going to give this guy a shout out. A shout out uh, to at Andrew uh, Matzo8167. I apologize if I'm mispronouncing your name. Uh, so again, th uh, this is a response to what he commented on my uh, video about LeBron James. Uh, not having done anything for the game of basketball. And so I'm going to read his whole uh, comment, and then I'm going to go through it and uh, say why I disagree. Uh, he says, uh, dude, LeBron has done a lot for the game of basketball and also for the people who play, ba play the game. Player empowerment is very big. The players should have the right to control their careers. It should not be left up to the general manager. Players should have the right to maximize their earning potential. The only reason viewership seems down is because people watch basketball on a number of outlets. Basketball is the number one sport talked about on social media. LeBron has also shown how you can bring your boys along and have uh, basketball work for them. Before LeBron James... The players all made someone else rich. An agent that you didn't know or who isn't from your community. Look at what LeBron has done. Him and his friends have the number one agency in all of sports. That's a hell of an accomplishment. Uh, LeBron has made it okay to comment on social matters to show what a family man is supposed to be. He isn't out here getting caught up in... Uh, in nonsense, he constantly lifts up his community. MJ and Kobe did it their way, which is cool. LeBron has shown how to do it unapologetically, being a black man. And I disagree with you. LeBron competes. If he didn't, he would have never been able to make the NBA straight out of high school, especially with all the naysayers he had to deal with. All right. Again, slightly different video because I, I think, like I said, I think this guy, he was respectful. He didn't come with the fanboy anthem. You know, he didn't call me a hater. He simply said he disagreed and he went through a uh, various list of why he disagrees. Uh, so let's just, let's just take this from the top. And, and I'm going to tell you why I disagree with what he's saying here. He says, LeBron has done a lot for the game of basketball and also for the people who play the game. Player empowerment is very big. The players should have the right to control their careers. Uh, so uh, um, I'm going to tell you why I disagree with that. Uh, the concept is great. You know, uh, conceptually, yes, that, that, should be, that could have been a great thing. But again, if you watch the video, if you listen to what I was saying in the video, the problem is that player empowerment has turned into something else. Uh, it has turned into entitlement. It has turned into players thinking they are entitled 
to have the best players on their team. Players thinking they are entitled to make all of this money with no real obligation to put forth their best foot. Now, uh, if you know anything about Michael Jordan, Michael Jordan actually predicted this would happen. He said players would be making so much money uh, at the beginning of their careers that they would have no incentive to really work. So, so yeah, like I said, uh, player empowerment, uh, the concept could be good, but the problem is it's gone way too far. And again, if you listen to the video, I said, yes, if you're talking about uh, from a selfish standpoint, yes, all these players are able to so-called get to the bag for themselves. But if you listen to the video, what I was talking about is the future of the NBA. The future of the NBA. So I'm, I'm going to say this again. And, you know, like I said, I'm, you know, this is for all the fanboys out there. There, Because you guys say some of the same stuff. Again, like this particular guy was respectful, so shout out to him. I'm, I'm going to address this in a respectful manner. But, however, um, these current players do not understand. Uh, it's, it's really simple business. The NBA is a product. You know, I think we all agree the NBA is a product. Uh, what does it take for a product to become valuable? It takes consumers. It takes people who saying, I will pay for that product. Now, if people uh, stop paying for the product, the product goes away. So, again, you know, we can go back through the history of the NBA. You know, uh, players like Dr. J, J who uh, helped save the league. You know, Larry and Magic who really saved the NBA, and then going to Michael Jordan, who took the game global, who made it possible for all these players to make this money. Now, here's the thing, is Michael Jordan was dedicated to the fans. Count the number of times Michael Jordan played 82 games, and he's given his reason behind that uh, several times, is that if Someone is going to spend their hard-earned money to see him. He feels obligated to not only play, but to play his best for them. That, is, that attitude is what grew the NBA. That is the attitude that grew the NBA. Is putting the fans first. It's putting the consumer first to, to understand that, hey, I'm here because of you guys. It is a mutual relationship. So if you guys are going to spend your money to come support me, to allow me to make so much money to play the sport that I love, then I owe it to you guys to play every game that I can possibly pl play and to play every game at the highest level. It is a mutual relationship. So when you talk about player empowerment is good, again, the concept is good. But what has happened is that players have solely been focused on themselves. So when that happens, the future of the NBA is in jeopardy. When you stop caring about the fans, like you may like LeBron James, but I think even you would have to admit that LeBron James uh, – is one of the least respected superstars in NBA history. And there's a reason for that. You can't just chalk it up to hate. There, there's no reason for anybody to hate LeBron except for how he conducts himself. Except because he's brought in a lot of the things that has turned off a large fan base. That has turned off a large a group of the fans who used to love the game, who loved the game during an era uh, where we not only have great players, but like I said, where the very attitude that the consumer uh, of players understanding that the consumer is the sole reason they have the uh, opportunity and ability to make a lot of money playing the sport that they love.
So yes, player empowerment is good from a selfish standpoint. But what's going to happen is that, uh, and we've already heard the talks about it. You know, each collective bargaining agreement, they're going to start clamping down more and more. You know, the only reason it's been uh, gotten this far out is because of who the current commissioner is. Because I think it's some other agendas uh, in the works with that. But when you forget about who made you, when you forget about the consumer, then you put the future je- future in jeopardy. So, yes, it, player empowerment may be good for LeBron James and James Harden and all the current players that you see. But what about 10 years from now? What about 20 years from now if they if they keep turning off the fan base? You, you can't assume that the fan base is going to be there. That's taking it for granted. You're, everyone is assuming that, oh, basketball this big is this big, and the, the fan base is just always going to be there. But no, uh, basketball is losing fans. People are not as interested. And so on that note, let me get to another point that you said. Uh, matter of fact, I think it's the next point that you said. You said the only re- reason viewership seems down is because people watch basketball on a number of outlets. Untrue. It doesn't matter what outlet you watch basketball on, uh, whether it's YouTube or the ESPN app or, or any of them, all of those apps keep track of what gets watched. Now, I will say this to you. Uh, I don't know how old you are, but to me, it's simple as looking at the world around you. Again, if you grew up during the Michael Jordan era and you knew how big basketball was then, then you wouldn't even have to uh, question what the ratings were. See, when we grew up with the Michael Jordan era, you didn't have to look at a TV to understand how big Michael Jordan was and to understand how big basketball was. Again, back then, uh, when we were in high school and middle school, uh, jerseys weren't basketball jerseys and football jerseys, but mostly basketball jerseys was common apparel. It was part of life. Again, most of us who grew up during the Jordan era was probably playing basketball uh, four to six times a week. Again, during the Jordan era, every court in your city was packed. And I know it's hard to believe. I, if, if, Like I said, I don't know how old you are, but if you didn't grow up during that era, then you have no concept for what I'm talking about. But the Jordan era... Everyone was playing basketball. And there was literally games at every court in your city. Like I said, now when I drive past these same courts, they're empty. So it doesn't matter what the ratings say. We can see that people as a whole aren't as interested in playing basketball. And to make an excuse for it is just, you know, being blind to the fact that, hey, if someone was motivating people, if someone was motivating people with their greatness, to want to play basketball, it would happen. You can't blame it on social media. But uh, anyway, let's move on. Uh, okay, so he says, LeBron has shown how you can bring your boys along and ha- have basketball work for them. Uh, before LeBron, the players all made someone else rich, an agent that you didn't know and who isn't from your community. Look at what LeBron has done. Him and his friends have the number one agency in all of sports. That's a hell of an accomplishment. Uh, that is a hell of an accomplishment. But again, all accomplishments uh, <laughs> don't necessarily have the same benefit. Again, that, that is great for LeBron James and his crew and his circle of people. That, that's wonderful. But we're, we're talking about the longevity of the, of the sport here. Um, and, and, and here's the thing. All of this player empowerment where these players are pretty much hoarding money selfishly. Let let me tell you something. That would be great if all of these players were planning on getting together and starting their own NBA. And starting an NBA ran by players. But this is, again, they're they're not uh, gaining this money with the thought of doing something to actually make the game better. This is simply selfish hoarding for them and and the people around them. 
And 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 so I'm gonna go ahead and say this too. Uh, the fact that they're who cares if they were making five million? Most people in the world do not get to make five million a year. So the fact that they're making you know a hundred million over a few years or something, that is too much money to justify uh, disregarding the fans for. That's too much money to justify uh, having that kind of selfishness. That's too much money to justify uh, saying, oh, okay, well, at least they're not making other people rich. Cause, and I'm going to go ahead and say this. I would rather money be going into someone else's pockets who has the longevity of the game uh, in mind. Meaning that we know the NBA will still be around for the next hundred years even if players were only making five to ten million a year, this is guaranteeing the longevity of the game and that people are going to be making money for the next century. So again, I, I think a lot of people who are into this player empowerment, to me, it's a very short-sighted thing. Like I said, to me, the only way to justify it is if these players were going to get together and make their own league. And make their own league where it's player control where players' money is running it, and where because they are the businessmen, they are have a vested interest in the league lasting. But this is not what's happening. Everybody's just talking about me, 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 and what I can get. So you know you can plot Le LeBron James for that if you want. But if thirty years from now uh, the NBA everybody's making uh, <laughs> a tenth of the money that they're making now. Because the because the viewership and fans have dropped off, then what what would you say then? All right. So anyway, this video is getting long, but let's 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 move on through. Uh, says LeBron has made it okay to comment on social matters to show what a family man is supposed to be. He isn't out here getting caught up in nonsense. He constantly uh, lifts up his community. Uh, MJ and Kobe did it their way, which is cool. LeBron has shown how to do it unapologetically being a black man. So here, here we go. Uh, Y'all, I'm sorry. This, this, this video is getting long, but uh, here's the thing with the whole so, social, social justice thing. If <laughs> I have a hard time believing in the sincerity, in the sincerity of LeBron James. I have a hard time believing it because of other antics. And, and because of that, you know, with me, now for somebody else, it's a totally different thing. But because of that, with me, like I said, uh, LeBron James is, is a politician. So to me, LeBron James, he's a social uh, warrior, justice warrior, as long as it doesn't infringe upon his money. I mean, you say unapologetically, uh, but we haven't actually, well, yeah, we the, the whole China thing. But in the NBA, even as far as speaking up on the whole BLM thing, we haven't seen him actually be put in the position to where it actually might jeopardize a big chunk of his money. So so this, this is the problem that I have with that, is because he's been such a politician that to me, I, I question the sincerity of it. And I'm not saying it's not. But I'm just saying, based on everything else he does, you know, based on the fact to me that he plays basketball with very low integrity, then I have a hard time uh, giving him credit for that. And, and con contrast that with Michael Jordan. Now, here, here's the thing. I feel like that Every so-called good thing that LeBron James does has to be in the eye of the camera, has to be made public. Everybody has to know that LeBron James stands up for this, that LeBron James gives to charity, that LeBron James does this. I trust, <laughs> I have much more trust in someone who doesn't feel the need to broadcast that stuff. You know, you say uh, jo Jordan and Kobe did it that way, and, I, and I'm less familiar with what Kobe has done. You know, I don't know. I haven't looked into it. But with Jordan, it's like 
the majority of stuff he did didn't come out to long after he retired. You know, some of it came out during the Wizards years, as we know. I think, uh, I can't remember if it was both years, but definitely the last year, I'm pretty sure he donated his whole salary to, to charity. So he was playing for free and played all 82 games, mind you. But the fact that Jordan uh, didn't publicize what he was doing behind closed doors, the charity work he was doing, you know, and he was doing uh, giving the charities for his people as well. The fact that he didn't broadcast that to me shows much more of a sincerity. Like he was actually doing it uh, from the kindness of his heart, you know, for for the benefit of his fellow man, you know, because it wasn't a show for him. And again, I think I probably just said this on a, another video. Uh, so forgive me if I've already said this. But like I said, and with Jordan being the most popular athlete on the face of the earth at the time, you know cameras were just waiting to publicize everything he did. So like I said, you know what that means is Jordan was saying, hey, no cameras. This is not for that. This is not for the cameras. This is just me doing something good for somebody. So, yeah, like I said, I, 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 I have a hard time believing in the sincerity of, Le of LeBron James based on how he conducts himself. Like I said, he conducts himself like a politician. So the next thing is uh, he talks about the family man thing. And again, here we go. Uh, when people say this, Nobody knows the inner workings of the LeBron James family. All you know is the image that is put out there. So when you say that as if you for a fact know that he's a great father, I'm not saying he's not. But what I'm saying is you are not in the LeBron James household to actually know this or not. Um, and uh, let's go ahead and wrap this up. And the last thing he says, and I disagree with you, LeBron competes. If he didn't, he wouldn't have never been able to make the NBA straight out of high school, especially with all the naysayers he had to deal with. And last but not least, so let's address this. Uh, here's the deal. Uh, everything is relative. I've, I've said this in many videos. So when I say LeBron James doesn't compete, obviously everybody in the NBA competes or they wouldn't get there. But what I'm saying is relative to the people that he wants to be compared to. You know, we can leave the fanboys out of it. We can leave unclutched sports out of it. We can leave the mainstream media out of it. LeBron James himself has said that uh, he wants to be the GOAT. He's chasing the GOAT. He thinks he is the GOAT. So based on the people that LeBron James wants to compare himself to, this is where we say he lacks competition. Again, anybody who made the NBA, anybody who makes any professional sports league is a competitor. But it's, it's all relative. When you're talking about comparing him to Michael Jordan, arguably the greatest competitor in the history of the game, what, no, LeBron is not a competitor compared to Michael Jordan. LeBron is not a competitor com compared to Kobe Bryant. LeBron James is not a competitor compared to uh, Magic Johnson and Larry Bird. It's all relative. So, I mean, and, and I feel like th these are the kind of things that, uh, like I said, a, a lot of LeBron James supporters, uh, to me, overlook. And, and, I, and I think miss, miss the big picture. It's like when all these content creators are talking about, oh, LeBron James doesn't compete or LeBron James is that, you know, all you guys hear is a bunch of criticism without taking into account that this is relative to who, he, to who he wants to be compared to. Is LeBron James a great player? Yes, he made the NBA. He's a great player. But when you compare him to the greatest of the great, then he falls short. And that's all we're saying. But anyway, <laughs> you 
This video has gone on far too long. But like I said, I just wanted to take the time and uh, address uh, this particular LeBron James fan. Like I said, I don't call him a fanboy because he was he actually came with some respect. He didn't use the fanboy anthem. And uh, so I wasn't going to put him in the fanboy files. <laughs> so again, shout out to the guy who wrote this and shout out to uh, at Andrew uh, Matzo, 8167. Again, forgive me if I'm mispronouncing the name. Uh, I appreciate your comment nonetheless. Uh, like I said, I, I, I disagree because I feel like it, we, we got to talk about the context that's surrounding those points. Yes, in a vacuum, everything you said is true. You know, LeBron James is successful. LeBron James is this and that and, and all this. But when you are comparing him to other things, like I said, then, then that's when you have to say, okay, yeah, he, he competes. He made it to the NBA, but he doesn't compete like Michael Jordan. There's is nothing you can say to justify saying he competes like Michael Jordan or Kobe Bryant or, or so on and so on. But anyway, let me know what you guys think in the comments. Uh, what do you think about what this viewer had to say? You all have a truly fantastic day, and I'll see you next time. All right.